Hey buddy, what can I get you? Damn, it's bad for business. <laughs> if they do live long enough to tip me, it's always in quarters. Hey buddy, come on, you want to pay up before you vaporize? Whoa, <laughs> too late. I'm inside this Pinball 2000 game, Revenge from Mars, to show you how the new Pin 2000 system works. And since Pin 2000 is different from Pinball of the past, we thought we could answer a few questions you might have about the new system. Let's get the scoop from the guys who created it. Pinball 2000 is the most serviceable pinball machine in the history of the game. The designers here were challenged to come up with a new kind of platform. Pinball 2000, as we know it, is direct result of all of the things that were requested by operations and distribution. We have a long list of features and points uh, that makes this much more attractive to both the operator and the distributor. The list of features associated with Pinball 2000 from a functional and service standpoint is extensive. Pinball 2000 is modular in every respect and it is a system. And it's a system with a tremendous amount of flexibility. Every piece of that system that needs to come out comes out easily and quickly. There is a lot of engineering that went into making these play fields flexible in, in the sense that they come in and out. The magic of the convertibility is the play field. And the play field literally pops out of the machine and disconnects in seconds. We think that the flexibility that is in Pinball 2000 in terms of kitting is going to give an operator tremendous flexibility in terms of how long he operates this product and how successful he is with the product. Ah, Paris in the spring. The sights, the sounds, the smell of rotting alien corpses. <laughs> I love this city. As you've just heard, Pinball 2000 is an entirely new game system. It has much in common with its predecessors, but has some features which are unique to this new system. As we show you how to set up a Pin 2000 machine, we will point out some of these new features. While Pinball 2000 is assembled very similarly to an older style pinball machine, there are certain procedures that are specific to the new Pinball 2000 system. Remove all cartons, parts, and other items from the shipping containers and set them aside. There is a hardware parts kit in the cash box. Remove the playfield from the cabinet before trying to attach the legs. To do this, unlock and open the coin door. Pull the yellow lever, located to the left of the coin door, to the right. The front molding will pop up. Lift the molding from the cabinet. Slide the playfield glass down. Lift the playfield by the support bracket under the bottom arch. Rest the playfield on the top of the cabinet. Unplug the cables on the bracket attached to the back of the playfield. Rotate the front of the playfield down and set it on the floor. Close the coin door. Install a leg leveler and nut on each of the legs. Place the cabinet on its back panel so that the coin door is facing upward toward the ceiling. Using two leg bolts in each leg, attach the front legs to the cabinet. Tip the cabinet onto its front legs. Raise and support the rear of the cabinet while attaching the rear legs. Use two leg bolts in each leg. Once the legs are securely attached, adjust the leg levelers so that the cabinet does not wobble. Next, prepare the back box. Locate the four mounting bolts and bushings in the hardware kit and set them aside. Separate the cables from the wood shipping brace. Remove the screws and shipping brace from the back box. Stand the back box upright. Remove and discard the four shipping screws securing the rear door. Unlock and remove the rear door. Pull the three cables out through the back door opening and let them hang down the rear of the back box. With the help of another person, carefully lift the back box and set it on the cabinet. Line up the four mounting holes in the cabinet with the mounting holes in the back box. Place a bushing from the parts kit in each of the cabinet mounting holes. Fasten the two assemblies together by inserting a bolt through the back box and into the cabinet in each of the four mounting holes. Slide the three cables back inside the back box and let them hang down inside the cabinet. Next, connect the cables. Do not force cables onto connectors. Cables should plug in easily. The three cables coming from the back box and going to the cabinet are the nine pin serial cable, the 25 pin parallel cable, and the power speaker cable.
There is one cable from the cabinet that goes to the back box. It is the ground strap. Plug the nine pin serial cable into the bracket near the coin door and screw it securely in place. Plug the 25 pin parallel cable into the power driver board at J100 and screw it securely in place. The power speaker cable has two connectors, a two pin connector for the speakers and a three pin connector for power. Plug the speaker cable connector into the two pin connector near the speakers and plug the power cable connector into the three pin isolation tab from the transformer, which is also located near the speakers. Be sure to match the wire colors on the speaker and power cables. Beginning with the second model, an interconnect panel will alleviate the need to run the various cables. However, with both models, you will still need to attach the ground strap separately. Replace and lock the back box rear door. Open the coin door. Carefully lift the playfield from the floor and rest it on the edge of the cabinet. Reconnect the six playfield cables. Slide the playfield back into the cabinet. Be sure that the cables at the back of the playfield are not kinked. Place a level or an inclinometer on the playfield surface, not the cabinet or the playfield cover glass. Adjust the leg levelers for proper playfield level. Tighten the nut on each leg leveler shaft to maintain this setting. The true pitch level is located on the right shooter rail. This allows the playfield pitch angle to be properly adjusted without removing the glass. The first line on the level is approximately 6 degrees. Every line thereafter is approximately another half degree of pitch. The recommended pitch is 6.5 degrees. The nose of the bubble should be between the first and second line on the level. Adjust the leg levelers so that the playfield pitch is the recommended 6.5 degrees. Begin by screwing the leg levelers all the way into the legs. If the floor is level, the cabinet is designed to position the playfield at 6.5 degrees. From this position, adjust if needed to compensate for an uneven or pitched floor. Be sure the required number of balls is installed. Refer to the manual. Replace the playfield glass. Be sure that the Pinball 2000 logo is in the lower left corner and that the smiley faces are visible. Snap the front molding securely into place. Close and lock the coin door. With the coin door closed, plug the game in and switch it on. In normal operation, the game performs startup tests. Once the startup tests have been successfully completed, the game enters the attract mode. Now perform normal pinball machine setup. Ah, Mars needs women. Yeah, check him out. He's watching Martian Cable. Actually, he's got on the Martian News Network. Latest news, everybody's still green. So, let's take an in-depth look at some of the new service and maintenance features of the Pinball 2000 system. One of the great new features of Pinball 2000 is the location key. A person who has the location key is not allowed access to the money in the cash box, but can still perform minor service on a Pinball 2000 machine.